<laughs> this has been crazy since the beginning of the day, um, but we made it. All right, let's have a little look at what happened in Raycast last month. We finally released support for a bunch of new AI models other than ChatGPT. We looked around and there are like hundreds of different models, right? We could integrate all of them, but this would also be a bit overwhelming. What is the superpower of a model or a model series? Like what makes them really, really good? Our audience is quite technical, so they know those models, they know the specifics of them, they know why they want to use one or the other model. So we wanted to give them the power and the choice doing that. With Anthropic, they have like a huge context window, and then Opus, which is the most powerful or capable model, is ranked basically the best model out there right now. With Perplexity, they're like super good at online knowledge, so they give you like real-time results. And then the superpower of like open source models is they're like the fastest out there. Thomas wrote a whole article about why you would choose a model over the other, so make sure to check it out in the description. This is like the most challenging part of our website. We also put out a brand new Raycast.com. I was supposed to help with some videos, but Raymond had a much better idea. Dan had come up with the idea to make a couple of videos that highlight some of the features of Raycast. As I was going through it, I just realized that if we want to make it feel really good to have it just there when the user enters the website, it would be better to, instead of doing videos, to animate it in the, um, in the browser itself. So what we do here is we have this React component and there's just toggles for all the different states that you can see. So the drop down that's here, the selection of these items, the typing, basically it's a helper function that just sets each letter and with a timing between, I think it's like 30 and 50 milliseconds to make it feel as if it's really a user typing. What you see is over time, the company changes um, as we sort of figure out these new features. And as this, as our company and as, as, as the thinking changes, um, we also notice that our, the way we think about our product changes and how we want to present it to users. And I think that's really what triggered us to, to sort of think about this and, and take a step back and, and go back to the drawing boards and, and think, okay, what, what do we want to say? Um, what is Raycast exactly? As you scroll through the website, you can probably get a sense that there's all these different blocks and each block has a, has a specific purpose. Um, and then like further down the page, there is this big block uh, where we focus on developers and where we really want to dig into the extension API and the customizability of, of, of Raycast. The other thing, of course, that everybody is talking about is, of course, the hero animation um, that's there. And that's all Dan. He came up with the idea. He, he played around with, with sort of the, the dynamics of it. Um, and, and I'm just, I'm, I'm still really, like, I, I can stare at it for hours. It was pretty wild to see all of your reactions on Twitter when we released the page. It's actually like a big perk of working at Raycast that you get this type of attention on, on your homepage. There's a lot of pressure with, that comes with it as well, because you know, like while you're working on the website, you know that people are going to are gonna look at it like really thoroughly. It's just so cool to be able to, to launch something that you're like really proud of. Um, that, that you really felt that everybody in the team went the extra mile. Um, you know, Sam with the, with the animations in the developer section, um, you know, as with the, with the hero, with the feature showcase. And a lot of companies, I think, don't take that extra time to, to get that, to that level of perfection. And uh, we do. And I think our, our users uh, uh, really appreciate that as well. Oh, even over the weekend, I was just showing, showing the website on my phone to a lot of people that I was talking to. I was like, hey, look at this, this is something I built. Um, that, that's just what I really enjoy about working at Raycast. Yeah, not our proudest moment, but you have to go through those things as well. Now let's talk about the huge bug in our app updater that put us into full-on crisis mode. Actually, back in 2020, we said, hey, let's build our own app updater. And we wanted to make that as smooth as possible because one of the nice things about Raycast is it runs 24 seven. So we never really want to have you to restart the app that you know from other apps. What happens in Raycast right now, we have a system that it's checking in background constantly if there is a new version uh, available for you. And if there is one, 
It's just downloading in the background all required files and it waits for the right moment to install them. It's going to kick in whenever you're not using Raycast just to make sure we don't break your workflow and it's going to happen automatically. And out of the sudden, all you're going to see is just what's new, informing you that the installation was was actually successful. We had like a buck internally, um, stupid copy pasting error in the code, which essentially turned off auto updating. The nasty thing with that is you cannot update it because that's the problem. That's like a chicken egg problem, right? Unfortunately, if we break the updating system, you have no way to to solve it. So even if the problem is fixed right now, we have this problem of transitioning from those broken versions that requires you to manually run the, the updating. We are also not aware of this problem for over two months. And only now we realized like we have 80% of our users stuck at older versions. Well, what do we do? I was quite uh, impressed how creative everybody got. So we're looking at the solution like what can we do, what's actually changing in the Raycast that how we can reach you without you updating the app, right? And the only thing that is actually working remotely and it's widely used is our store with our extensions. That's the only place we can leverage to deliver a new content into the old application. So what we will do, we will try to kind of like inject and execute check for updates through our own extensions if you open them. How would we think it will work um, is that it's going to execute the check for updates. So of course, installation doesn't work yet, but at least because we run it manually, we kind of fake that you run it. And then you will see the prompt at the top of the list uh, saying that there is a new update available. And this is our goal. What you should do, you should type in check for updates in Raycast and then just hit return. You can check for the latest update, it gets the latest version and afterwards it's smooth sailing again. So you get all the next updates automatically as you're used to. It took like three minutes to break it and now it takes like a week to, to fix. That's it for today. Hope you like this new format that we're trying to put out probably monthly. We want to try and get more and more people on the team to share some behind the scenes and give you more of a peek of what we're working on. I didn't even have time to cover number four today, which was the new onboarding. So if you're a new Raycast user or you're on a fresh new install, you're going to see a whole new screen and have a whole new onboarding experience, which is pretty cool with some funky animation and an easier way to replace Spotlight, which is pretty neat. So if you're feeling adventurous, maybe hop on a fresh new install of Raycast to check it out. See you next video.